Ladies and gentlemen, you probably already know that Saudi Arabia is renowned for its vast stretches of sand deserts, relentless climate changes, and a scarcity of rainfall. But how exactly has Saudi Arabia been tackling these seemingly insurmountable challenges? Today, we're about to uncover a remarkable transformation that will leave you in awe, and it's like nothing you've seen before. Saudi Arabia's agricultural development has not only astounded the world but has also left scientists worldwide utterly amazed. So, stick around for this video to uncover all the astonishing facts. If we delve into Saudi Arabia's history, we'll discover that it's a nation in Western Asia, formerly known as the State of Saudi Arabia. It ranks as the second largest Arab nation in Western Asia and the Middle East, covering most of the Arabian Peninsula with a vast land area of approximately 2,150,000 square kilometers. In fact, it's also the fifth largest country in all of Asia. However, despite its fame and popularity, Saudi Arabia has long struggled with desertification. The nation boasts a varied landscape, featuring forests, grasslands, mountains, and deserts. This diversity also brings with it distinct temperature variations. In the summer, the desert can sizzle at over 110 degrees Fahrenheit, while in the north and central regions, temperatures can plummet below freezing in the winter. But recently, Saudi Arabia has undergone a miraculous turnaround, harnessing modern technologies to transform its arid deserts into lush green farmlands. You see, Saudi Arabia typically receives a meager four inches of rainfall annually, making it one of the world's most water-scarce countries. Despite 97% of the population having access to drinkable water, only 89.5 cubic meters of water are produced per person each year. With a majority of water being used for agriculture, how exactly is Saudi Arabia addressing its water scarcity crisis? Over the past three decades, agriculture in the kingdom has witnessed astonishing progress, all while grappling with one of the lowest annual rainfall rates in the world. Today, Saudi Arabia exports an array of products to markets worldwide, including wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and even flowers. Dates, once a dietary staple, are now primarily grown for international humanitarian assistance. The Ministry of Agriculture shoulders most of the responsibility for Saudi Arabia's agriculture policies. But here's where the magic happens, the government, in collaboration with the private sector, has been instrumental in spurring the growth of agriculture. They've provided long-term, interest-free loans, technical support, and financial incentives, including free fertilizers and seeds, affordable water, fuel, electricity, and duty-free imports of equipment and raw materials. In the 1970s, a significant agricultural transformation began, supported by the construction of rural roads, irrigation networks, storage facilities, and export facilities. Saudi Arabia's self-sufficiency in staple foods, like meat, milk, and eggs, has soared as a result. However, it's essential to remember that all of this agricultural success hinges on water. Saudi Arabia has secured a vast water supply through an extensive network of dams to capture valuable periodic floods, tapping into underground water reservoirs through deep wells, 
and constructing desalination facilities to convert seawater into fresh water for cities and industries. This allows other sources to be allocated for farming. Thanks to these efforts, what was once barren desert is now flourishing farmland. In 1976, Saudi Arabia had less than 400,000 acres of agricultural land, but by the 21st century, this had grown to millions of acres. But what's truly astounding is that, despite the predominance of desert terrain, Saudi Arabia is home to a surprising number of indigenous plant species that can withstand the harsh climate. Under the banner of the Saudi Green Initiative, steps are being taken to preserve and expand the kingdom's vegetation, from the northern desert landscapes to the lush southern regions. Saudi Arabia boasts an abundance of vegetation, with over 2,000 wild plant species belonging to 142 different families, according to the Saudi National Center for Wildlife. However, nearly 600 of these species are endangered, and 21 are believed to be extinct. To combat this, the SGI has embarked on the largest reforestation project the country has ever seen, with a goal of planting 450 million trees in the coming years. Already, about 10 million trees have been planted across all 13 of the kingdom's regions. Now, when we think of Saudi Arabia, we might not immediately picture vast forests. However, the kingdom is home to approximately 2.7 million hectares of woodland, primarily in the rugged, hard-to-reach mountains of APA and Asa in the southwest. While planting 450 million trees may sound ambitious, especially with the planned greening of the desert, it's a testament to Saudi Arabia's commitment to overcoming challenges, even in the face of rapid urbanization. Let's dive into the remarkable initiatives set forth by the Saudi government. Their specific SGI objectives are aimed at seamlessly integrating green spaces into urban growth, encompassing parklands and forest stations within the kingdom's desert cities. The goal is to counter the potential downsides of urban sprawl. By greening these unmanaged urban surfaces, we're not only slowing down global warming but also reducing carbon dioxide emissions, enhancing air quality, opening up possibilities for more active lifestyles, and sustainably beautifying our cities. On the flip side, the greening initiatives in rural areas face unique challenges. Desertification, scarce water supplies, and record high temperatures are all pressing issues, often attributed to human-induced climate change. The SGI Roadmap is a comprehensive effort to protect the kingdom's unique biodiversity, halt and reverse desertification and soil degradation and preserve the nation's limited water resources in regions where rainfall is insufficient and groundwater is depleted. Currently, Saudi Arabia safeguards 15 locations due to their biodiversity, with 12 on land and 3 in the sea, as per the National Center for Wildlife. The plan is to increase this number to 75, with 62 on land and 13 in coastal and aquatic regions. Approximately 6% of the kingdom's total surface area is covered by the King Salman World Nature Reserve in northern Saudi Arabia, a region that's home to around 300 different animal species and rare archaeological heritage sites dating back to 800 BC. It's a diverse landscape with mountains, vast plains, and high plateaus. 
In collaboration with Volunteers and Modern Technology, the Reserve's administration recently planted 100,000 seedlings as part of an initiative supported by the Reserve's authority and partners. These efforts are aligned with the SGI's objectives dedicated to increasing vegetation cover in the kingdom. The plants chosen for this endeavor are perennial trees and shrubs that are native to the desert's harsh conditions, making them drought-resistant and low-maintenance, which is crucial in water-scarce regions. However, water remains a significant challenge in conservation and greening projects. Freshwater wells, a traditional source of water for the people of the Arabian Peninsula, have sustained life for centuries. But as the nation experienced economic growth in the 1970s, there was a shift towards modern farming techniques and a gradual reliance on groundwater resources. To address the water scarcity issue, Saudi Arabia invested in seawater desalination plants along its eastern and western coastal regions to support inland cities. The kingdom faces a lack of rivers, natural lakes, and a meager annual rainfall that fails to replenish these water sources. The increasing demand for fresh water is quickly depleting natural aquifers. As a result, the Saudi government is exploring ways to protect and optimize its water resources to meet the demands of a growing economy, while maintaining well-watered green spaces. The King Abdullah University of Science and Technology Center for Desert Agricultures, along with Maria Nava, a scientific advisor for Green Arabia, is considering using treated wastewater to irrigate newly planted vegetation as part of the SGI's strategic approach. Another objective is to reduce rainwater loss to the sea through sand infiltration by enhancing water harvesting and soil remediation. It's worth noting that urban vegetation requires more water and canopy coverage for shade compared to arid regions with trees that are drought-resistant and have fewer leaves, such as mountainous wadi and desert climates. Changes in agriculture have also impacted the traditional diet in Saudi Arabia. The variety of local foods available today is a far cry from what was imaginable just a few generations ago. While dates remain a significant part of the Saudi diet, they're no longer the essential staple they once were. Out of the 450 different types of dates produced each year, approximately half a million tons are now used for international humanitarian assistance. The World Food Program, WFP, of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, receives tens of thousands of tons of dates donated annually from Saudi Arabia to help alleviate famine and food shortages. In fact, one factory in Al Hossa is entirely dedicated to producing dates for foreign assistance. Saudi Arabia stands as the second largest donor to the WFP's Food Assistance Initiative, right after the United States. To foster agricultural development, the government has rolled out numerous initiatives, including soft loans with low interest rates and support services that have significantly contributed to the sector's growth over the past few years. Moreover, low-cost water, fuel, and electricity, along with duty-free imports of equipment and raw materials, have bolstered the agricultural sector. Tax exemptions of up to 10 years are granted to foreign joint venture partners of Saudi individuals or businesses. Additional incentives have been provided by investment rules since April 2000. 
The Ministry of Agriculture takes the lead in shaping agricultural policy and supports farmers through research and extension work. Another key player is the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, Saab, which disburses assistance and offers interest-free loans. To support the expansion of agriculture across the country, the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization, founded in 1972, purchases and stockpiles wheat and creates animal feed. The government has committed substantial financial resources to enhance the road networks that connect production regions. With consumer markets, fostering private investment in the agricultural sector. The Land Distribution and Reclamation Program, launched in 1968, aims to distribute fallow land for free, typically in small plots, to expand the area under cultivation and promote crop and livestock production. Beneficiaries must cultivate at least 25% of the total land area within two to five years, after which they gain complete ownership of the land. With a focus on diversification and improved efficiency, the government continues to support new farmers as they undertake capital-intensive projects under development plans. Research initiatives are also funded to develop new food crops, increase harvests, and create strains with higher pest resistance to boost farm productivity. These programs are carried out through collaborations between local farmers and scientists. All of this marks a remarkable accomplishment for a nation that must import 90% of its fresh food. The transformation of the harsh Arabian desert into a flourishing orchard is a feat worth celebrating. It's a reminder of how the right mix of clay and water can work wonders. However, challenges remain, and that's where the story of the Egyptian Delta comes into play. The Delta was once a fertile region where the Nile's floodwaters rich with minerals and nutrients from the East African drainage basin, used to bring life and fertility to the land. It was a dependable location for farming for millennia, fostering a strong civilization with cultural achievements that are still celebrated today. But fast forward to the 1960s, and southern Egypt was building the Aswan Dam across the Nile for hydroelectricity. The consequences were profound, and the once fertile delta faced a dramatic loss of fertility. The key was the clay particles carried by the Nile's floodwaters, and when that source was cut off, the soil's resilience and fecundity disappeared. The Nile's annual flooding had been a lifeline for Egypt, delivering not just water but essential nutrients to the fields. With the construction of the Aswan Dam, it seemed like a leap forward, but it came at the cost of the Delta's fertility. This shift in the balance of nature serves as a crucial reminder of how interconnected our actions are with the environment. The Saudi Green Initiative is a step in the right direction, highlighting the importance of preserving our environment, ensuring a sustainable future, and embracing the lessons learned from history. We must continue to find innovative ways to address these challenges, promote green spaces, and sustain our precious resources. It's a journey that will impact not only our generation, but generations to come. Thank you for joining me on this adventure of knowledge and exploration. How we're changing the game of agriculture and transforming deserts into oases of life. It's an incredible journey, so let's get started. Imagine a world where you could control flooding and make farming more predictable and manageable. 
That's precisely what a game-changing structure did. Stretching 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers wide, it revolutionized how we harness nature's power. But it came with a catch, it halted the flow of vital nutrients downstream. You see, these nutrients were nature's way of providing a yearly top-up to the fertility of estuary soils. Without this natural replenishment, these soils would have been depleted within a decade. It was a puzzling challenge, but soil scientists and engineers were up to the task. The solution? It came in the form of nanoclay, introduced by Desert Control, a Norwegian company. It's not too different from what you might find in your backyard, but its effects are remarkable. You see, thin soils with little organic matter struggle to retain moisture and support plant growth. But, when you add the right amount of clay, it can work wonders. Desert Control's nano-clay method is like magic. It's turning barren desert territory into fertile grounds for farming. You might think clay is nothing new in farming, and you'd be right. Farmers have used clay for centuries to improve their soils. But here's the twist, it used to be labor-intensive and destructive to underground ecosystems. Traditional plowing and excavation had their environmental costs, from exposing carbon to releasing it as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The intricate soil biome was disrupted. It was clear a new, more sustainable approach was needed. And this is where Saudi Arabia's hidden treasure comes into play. Did you know that Saudi Arabia is searching for something even more precious than oil? For the past 24 years, it's been tapping into buried water supplies to cultivate wheat and other crops in the Syrian desert. The magic comes from drilling through the desert floor to access underground rivers and lakes left over from the last ice age. This fossil water once flooded aquifers, and these ancient water sources are now being used to irrigate crops. It's a marvel, really, a testament to human ingenuity. Water is a non-renewable resource in this region, with annual rainfall averaging about one inch per year. Hydrologists predict that it will only be cost-effective to pump water for roughly 50 years. The stakes are high, and there's much to gain, but also much to lose. Let's talk technology now. Farming isn't just about seeds and soil, it's a world of innovation. Microirrigation, which uses small amounts of water close to the plants, is changing the game. Imagine sprinkler systems where water is sprayed or gravity systems that flood the fields or use furrows to channel water. It's like choreographing a ballet of hydration for the crops. Farmers are becoming tech savvy using soil moisture sensors, decision support tools on their computers or smartphones, and remote control of irrigation equipment. It's a bit like farming in the digital age, and it's boosting farm profitability while conserving water. But there's more to the story. You might think that water conservation is a key driver of technology adoption, but the data suggests something else. Profit and risk reduction are the real game changers for farmers embracing these innovations. Issues like small farm size, high capital expenditures, and a lack of knowledge about these technologies can pose hurdles. Connectivity is another challenge, especially in rural regions with limited access to broadband. So, 
there's room for growth and learning in the world of precision agriculture. Now, let's talk satellites and technology. Landsat satellites have been our eyes in the sky since 1982, giving us a bird's eye view of our changing world. These satellites, managed by NASA and the U.S. Department of the Interior through the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, have been invaluable for tracking forest health, storm damage, agricultural trends, urban development, and more. Through Landsat's 40-year archive of images, we've gained a better understanding of our changing planet. Landsat has been a critical tool for environmental monitoring and research, and it's publicly accessible online. Shifting gears to Saudi Arabia, where agriculture is akin to striking gold in the desert. One third of the Earth's land surface is desert, characterized by low precipitation, sandy soil, and scorching temperatures. Yet, millions of people rely on deserts for their livelihoods. These deserts are their source of food and employment. The challenge is real. Factors like climate change, population pressures, extreme temperatures, low soil fertility, and water scarcity pose serious threats to desert agriculture. But the story doesn't end there. Over the decades, we've witnessed remarkable advances in desert agriculture. Technology, renewable energy, desalination, and innovative water-saving methods are turning arid soil into productive farmland. These technologies are game-changers, increasing crop output while reducing water and energy consumption. It's a global effort, with research institutions and private businesses leading the way. These advancements are vital as deserts often rely on non-renewable or salty water sources, making groundwater control a top priority. Now, let's talk about ICANDA, a solution to systematically transform desert agriculture. By integrating traditional farming practices, nature-based solutions, and affordable technologies, we're scaling up Integrated Desert Family Farming Systems, IDSAT. These systems are the key to preserving desert food networks and agrobiodiversity. In many desert regions, people live on as little as 100 millimeters of rainfall per year. Desert farming isn't just a choice, it's often the only source of food production and employment. But the perfect storm of climate change, poor land management, and isolation from markets poses a significant threat. The good news is that with the right mix of innovative technologies, policies that support desert farming, and local knowledge, we're not just surviving, we're thriving. From horticulture to date palms, irrigated forages to protected agriculture, we're making the impossible possible. However, the heart of desert agriculture remains water. Pumping water from non-renewable or salty sources is a necessity. The real challenge lies in long-term groundwater control, making it a top priority in desert farming. This wraps up our incredible journey through the world of desert agriculture. It's a testament to human innovation and resilience. What do you think about Saudi Arabia's transformation? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and that all-important like button. Stay tuned for more exciting stories. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell.
Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.